Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to properly adapt the external service to your client's needs by using the adapter pattern in C-Sharp. The adapter design pattern is a structural pattern that allows incompatible interfaces to work together. By doing so, we allow objects from different interfaces to exchange data. At the end of this video, I will also discuss when we should use this pattern. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. So, let's move on with the project. As you can see in the diagram, the main parts of the adapter pattern are the adaptee, adapter, and the client interface. Of course, the client is the part that consumes the result from the adapter. Following this structure, I will implement the adapter design pattern in my project. Let's imagine that we have functionality in which we convert the list of car manufacturers into JSON format and write it to the screen. But instead of list, we have been provided with an API that provides us with all the manufacturers in the XML format. So this extra project will be our API example from which we will get the XML data. Of course, we can't modify this existing API functionality because of the technical restrictions. For example, this API can be imported into our project from another solution that we mustn't modify, or it is installed as a Nugget package. So we have to find a way around it. The proper way to do it is to implement the adapter pattern to solve this problem. At this point, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blaze of WebAssembly course you can use to create client C-Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. Ok, since we have to use the XML service in our main app, I have the Service Manager class prepared where I will register all my services with the dependency injection. So, inside the Configure Services method, let's inject this service as a transient service and provide the interface and the class implementation. With this service, I will get the XML data I need. Now, I can start working on the adaptee part of the pattern. The first thing I will do is create a new interface inside the adaptee folder and name it iJSON Converter. This interface will be the main contract for the adaptee class and I will add a single member to it with the string return type and let's name it adapt to json. With this one done, I can create the adaptee class named json converter. This one must inherit from the previous interface and let's implement it quickly. Before I modify this method, I have to inject the XML service here so I can transform or adapt the data to the required format. To do that, let's add a new private read only i manufacturer data provider field named provider. Also, let's use the constructor to initialize this field. Now, I can modify the method's implementation. First, I will get the XML data from the provider service using the getData method. Then I need data in a proper format, so I will use the XML data here, which is of the X document type, and call the element method to extract the manufacturer's element here, the root one. Next, I need all the individual elements with the manufacturer's name. Once I have those, I can project this to a new collection of the manufacturer type. Where for the city, I will call the attribute method with the city parameter and use the value property to extract the value of this attribute. Then for the name, I will use the same attribute method just this time provide the name as an argument and again call the value property. The last one I need is year and I will convert it to int 
use the attribute method to get the year and of course use the value property to get the value of the current attribute. With all that done, I can return the result by calling the JSON serializer dot serialize method, use the data here and apply some JSON serialization options to print the JSON with indented format. Now, I need to register this functionality as a service as well inside the service manager class. So again, let's use the add transient method and provide the interface first and then the implementation class. Great. With this, my adaptee class is prepared. It will adapt the object from XML to JSON format. And now I can work on the adapter part. Again, as you remember from the diagram, I need a client interface first. I will place it inside the adapter folder and name it I manufacturer JSON service. Here, I will again have a single string member named get manufacturers. Nothing more than that. Next, let's create an adapter class named manufacturer json service obviously this class will inherit from the previous interface and let's implement it fast then if you remember from a diagram this class must have an adaptee injected so let's create a private read only i json converter field named json converter and let's use a constructor to initialize this one. Now, I don't want to reinvent the wheel with this method, but just pay attention that you can have any type of business logic in here that could provide an even better response for the client, maybe with some additional content or whatever. But the main part is that now I can use the adaptee class to get the JSON format from the XML service. Also, let's return a simple string as a result. Ok, with this done, let's register this service as well. Call the services.addTransient method and provide the interface first and the implementation class next. Good, now that I have my adapter service registered, let's use it inside the client class. In this case, the program class. First, I will create a service manager variable and use the service manager class with the create service provider method to prepare the service provider and return it. Then I can extract my JSON service by using the service manager variable and calling the get service method, where I will provide the type of the service I want to fetch. And for this, I need the Microsoft Extensions Depends Injection namespace. Finally, since I have a required service, I can print the result of the get manufacturers method to the console. Nothing more complicated than this. Now, let's run the app and you can see the data in the JSON format here. Great. Now, let's see when we should use this pattern. We should use the adapter pattern whenever we want to work with the existing class, but its interface is incompatible with the rest of our code. The adapter pattern acts as a middle layer, which serves as a translator between the code implemented in our project and some third party class or any other class with a different interface. Furthermore, we should use the adapter when we want to reuse existing classes from our project, but they lack a common functionality. By using the adapter pattern in this case, we don't need to extend each class separately and create a redundant code. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.